Hello, and welcome to Beyond Books, where we talk about books and always go beyond. I'm your host. I'm Renee. Your co-host just jumped down. That's Raina. Raina is the co-host, and I think I can entice her to get back in uh, the camera vision with a snap here. Let's see. Come on, Raina. You know where you're supposed to be. Have a seat. <laughs> Come in for the long haul. <laughs> So, today I'm here to talk about my reading plans for October. It is October 3rd already. Um, and so it's about time I told you what I'm reading for this spooky, scary, but fun month. Um, I like October. I like the fall. I like Halloween. So, good times ahead. Um, now, first... I'm slowly making my way uh, through this month's book of the month, not because I don't like it, but it's on audio and um, I really don't listen to audio books all that often. So um, yeah, it's uh, Mad Woman and it's by Chelsea Biker. And so more to come on that once I get the book finished. Uh, next, also in electronic form <laughs> on my Kindle, um, I have uh, a book entitled Managing and Other Lies. This is by Willow Heath. Uh, the full title is Managing and Other Lies, a Queer Horror Collection. Uh, Willow is a fellow booktuber, and I'll put a link to her channel below. Uh, this is her first book, so it's very exciting for her, I'm sure. Uh, it came out in July just in time for the Halloween season, which is nice. Uh, and now I've only read the first story so far, which is called Managing. Um, and so far, so good. Uh, so I'll happily read the other stories and um, probably do those later in the month. And, uh, you know, once we get the creepy stuff really started. So um, now to move on to what I'm reading in the physical realm. Uh, the physical books. I've started this uh, imaginary friend. This is by Stephen Chbosky. Uh, and if you remember Mr. Chbosky, uh, he is the author who wrote Perks of a Wild, uh, I'm sorry, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Perks of a Wildflower, um, which is the book that actually launched the uh 24 bb band book project um but i never knew that he wrote any horror stories so um let me just say this about horror as well um i read horror although not much uh i will definitely read it for the halloween season and i usually do enjoy what i read um, I most enjoy uh, probably overall Stephen King, although I don't necessarily like all of his books. I seriously doubt there's anyone that likes all of his books, really. Um, he's written so many, it seems almost impossible. Uh, but when it comes to horror, my preference is for um, horror that has well-developed, uh, relatable, and interesting characters. Uh, and that was one of my reasons for choosing this book. <clears throat> I figured if I liked Perks because of the characters, then why not try out his horror stories? So this one was published in 2019. Uh, and again, so I have to say, so far, so good. Um, I like his character development and the storyline has really held my interest. So um, that's good because the book is over 700 pages, uh, but I am making progress. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Good book so far. So next I plan to read Bear Town. Uh, this is by Frederick Bachman. Boy, this book is so much lighter than the other one. <laughs> um, this uh, is for the Ellen Maid Book Club. I'll link her channel below. Uh, last time I read with Ellen, we read A Man Called Uva. Uh, so I guess we're on a Bachman mission. And uh, I'm sure that I'll be talking about this a lot more in the future. And there's still time for 
you know, anyone to go ahead and read the book if you haven't already. Uh, and then uh, submit questions into Ellen when she calls for them. And uh, she'll use those questions uh, as prompts to review and discuss the book uh, once we've all had a chance to complete it. Uh, and that's what I did the last time with Uva is I went ahead and answered uh, the questions as I reviewed the book as well. So I'll probably do that again with this book. No reason why not. And I've heard very good things about it. So I am looking forward to that. Next, I can't let the scary month go by. I've already mentioned his name. I've already invoked his spirit without reading a Stephen King, right? Um, so this one is going to count also as a banned book as well. Um, I've never read it before. It's called uh, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon, and it's from 1999. Uh, very recently now, Florida banned a number of King's books uh, from their schools. I don't believe that it's a statewide ban. Um, I believe it's county by county, at least judging by the information that I looked at. Um, I'm going to link an article uh, below in case you're interested and uh, you can see the complete list. And I'll tell you now, <laughs> it's very extensive. Uh, some of the counties have quite a few of his titles banned. Uh, one thing that uh, might be somewhat groundbreaking and kind of interesting, something to maybe watch and follow about this particular ban uh, is that uh, the publisher now has gotten involved. So um, I don't know what that will ultimately mean or what that will bring, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can talk about that a little bit more in detail uh, once I complete and, you know, review the book. My, I have to tell you, I used to live in Florida, as some of you probably know, and my knee-jerk reaction or, you know, first impression uh, regarding this ban uh, is that, you know, it's a political ban. So I'll let you read the article and just think about it for a while and see what you think and, you know, be able to do your own research on that. But I, I'll definitely talk more about it. Um, when we do the band book review of that. So then lastly for this month, uh, and I've mentioned this before on my channel, I'd like to do an overnight read uh, where, where I stay up all night and read and just kind of check in with the video from time to time uh, to let you know how it's going. So um, I'm going to do that later in the month when it's more dark and scary than it is now. Uh, and of course, you know, it's Halloween. So I'm going to read uh, a horror book. Now I had originally chosen, uh, the troop by Nick Cutter. Uh, but then I found out that it had scenes of animal torture in it. And the co-host here said, no, no, absolutely not. Um, and I don't blame her. So. Uh, I do have this book instead, and it is called Incidents Around the House, uh, and it's by Josh Mallerman. And uh, this I got as an add-on a few months ago from Book of the Month, and I've just, uh, you know, saved it, put it aside just, you know, for this occasion of reading in October, overnight. Uh, so this book now just came out in June of 2024. Uh, it's around three and a half to four stars or so on Amazon and Goodreads. So it's, you know, pretty well rated. Uh, so let me read you the info on the jacket flap. And you can tell me if you think it's scary enough for me. The answer is yes, just so you know. <laughs> um, to eight-year-old Bella, her family is her world. There's mommy. Daddy O and Grandma Ruth, but there is also Other Mommy, a malevolent entity who asks her every day, Can I go inside your heart? When horrifying incidents around the house signal that Other Mommy is growing tired of asking Bella the question over and over, Bella understands that unless she says yes, her family will soon pay. Other Mommy is getting restless, stronger, bolder, 
Only the bonds of family can keep Bella safe, but cracks in her parents' marriage are starting to show. The safety Bella relies on is about to unravel. But other mommy needs an answer. Incidents Around the House is a chilling, wholly unique tale of true horror about a family as haunted as their home. Now that sounded, that sounded kind of scary to me. So looking forward to that. Uh, and you can see my face as I, as I read it, you know, it could be fun. Let's see what happens. So that's my October plan. Now, I just have one more announcement. And this is other news not having to do with books. But it does have to do with my channel. I'm sure that some of you have heard that my beloved Arrow Garden will no longer be sold. The Arrow Gardens are no longer going to be sold. <laughs> I may need some therapy and some TLC as I grieve. Uh, but on the positive side, uh, it looks like there are other companies that will continue to make the seed pods. So the arrow gardens themselves will still be useful and still be able to be used. Uh, apparently, there um, are some styles that fit a variety of gardens, uh, arrow garden being one of them. Uh, so we'll hope for the best with that. Uh, and I will try some of those brands soon. Um, I don't always use the arrow garden brand seeds anyway. Um, you do have to use the basket and sponge system more or less or at least something that'll fit your arrow garden um as far as physically but otherwise i mean you you can use your own seeds down inside of the sponges uh, so lots of times people just you know start the seeds in the garden and then go ahead and plant the more mature plants outside anyway so i'll link the statement from arrow garden uh below it doesn't really say why uh, the arrow gardens won't be available anymore. But um, if I had to guess, I would say probably more companies are making their own systems now. Uh, and it's brought the price down. You know, the Miracle Grow company uh, probably is no longer, you know, maybe willing or able even uh, to compete in the market. So um, again, more to come about that. Uh, and if I do try other brands as far as seeds, pods, liquid nutrition, uh, or the actual gardens themselves, whatever, I'll certainly let you know uh, how I like them in comparison to the Aero Gardens. So um, yeah, my little gardens, may they rest in peace. Uh, so anyway, thank you for putting up with me. And if you like my channel, please subscribe uh, if you haven't already. Uh, keep on reading and keep going beyond. Thank you for watching.